everyone. I'm Andy Asher. I'm host of Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. Another great show coming up today. We travel away from the 200 remote forested islands on the Strait of Georgia, known for sheltered waters, stunning scenery, and a mild climate to the towns that cater to travelers and tourists who enjoy the, the classic pleasures of vacation. My uh, golfing friends have not been far from my mind. You see, it just so happens that I am not a golfer, but I do know one thing. It takes a lot of water to keep golf greens green. Beautiful golf greens, thanks to lots of winter moisture that gives way to wondrous weather the rest of the year. That is coming up shortly. In Mimi's kitchen, she is whipping up another luscious dish from her Mediterranean cuisine of recipes. I'm just going to have one and put some more dipping sauce because I love spicy. Woo, it's hot. Oh, it's so good. We'll be checking in with Mimi periodically. Our interview today is with a guy who made a living in the grueling world of courtrooms and law books, only finding out much later in life he could reinvent himself as an author. I go back to what I said about Nike. If you want to do it, just do it. So let's get on with the show, and first we take a visit into Mimi's kitchen to learn what she's up to. Hello. Today I'm going to make some spicy, crispy, well, I should say crispy, spicy tofu. I uh, marinated the tofu for 20 minutes in soy sauce, a little bit of agave, uh, sesame oil, a little bit of uh, uh, avocado oil, and just let it marinate for 20 minutes. I cut some uh, cucumbers, that's what I'm gonna serve it on, you know, just uh, cucumbers, some uh, carrots and I pickled some red onions as usual. So now I uh, made also a nice dipping sauce that goes with it. And I put some ginger, some garlic, some soy sauce, some lime juice, some uh, green onions, and of course, the beautiful Thai chilies. Awesome. And the thing is, I'm gonna make it in my air fryer. So I'm getting it ready. Just warm it for like uh, three to four minutes at 350. And then you turn up to 400, time it to 13 minutes, and you put your nice uh, marinated tofu in there and you're gonna have a very nice crispy tofu and it's spicy. So let's, uh, let's try doing that, right? Thank you, Mimi. We'll check in very soon. More than 10 years ago, Bloomer Boomer was launched as the Huffington Post for people over 55. Back then, we curated, posted, and shared epic content. Each year, we got a little bit better and we grew with the times. And in January of 2023, we started a new live stream show and made it available every Tuesday on multiple platforms everywhere, calling it Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. I hope you dive in and join us and like what you see. At the end of the show, I will tell you three ways that you can support it and keep Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared going. Today's guest is Mark Bello, who during his career as a lawyer was involved in court cases that were worthy of a novel. There was one singular event that prompted him to write his first book. To his surprise, years later, at the age of 70, he has 10 novels children's books, and even a cookbook that all started with his first book. I thought I was going to be a one-and-done author. I thought I, I, I fulfilled my bucket list and that would be it. And then the 2016 election came along. How um, the things that were being said, the themes that were being launched, the behavior uh to me was a board. I'm trying to put all the dots together here. There's some must be some tie in 
to that those lessons to your uh, ability or or to see a story. Frankly, un until I wrote Betrayal of Faith, the first novel, I didn't think that I could do something like that. Something else you had told me when we talked earlier, and I think I got it right, is that uh, that talent, the word talent is kind of overdone, overstated. I, I would I would say to you that I, that my talent surprises me. I wouldn't say that I have none. Okay, that's um, fair enough. And I and I I would suggest to you that that if any, everybody could write a book, everybody would. So I'm I'm not necessarily suggesting that you don't have to be talented to write a book. Uh, you you certainly have to be talented to write a good book. I certainly wouldn't have been able to do this in my 30s and 40s raising a family and um, running a law practice and practicing law at the same time. I just didn't have the time, nor nor did I have the, the inclination. Well, we were talking um, earlier again about the, kind of the vague dangers facing the average person that the, and this is kind of your legal background, that the courts and the lawyers may become you know, they may become more inclined to throw out cases that uh, that they believe are frivolous. Largest lobbying arm for that notion is the United States Chamber of Commerce. And this idea of frivolous lawsuits or lawsuit abuse comes from a campaign, a big business U.S. Chamber of Commerce campaign to suggest that lawsuits filed are frivolous. Even if they are, if they're worth 20 bucks, you have an absolute right to file. That's what the Seventh Amendment says. Have, have you had uh, formal novel writing experience and training? No, no, uh -huh. just, just uh, my legal and college education. I have my work edited, I proofread, and sometimes uh, those uh, grammar hawks are, are um, crit <laughs> critical, uh, sometimes not. Sometimes I disagree with their, their criticism, and I'm, and I'm the, uh, the ultimate uh, arbiter of, of what goes on a page. Well, it's a very important role in getting a novel uh, out there. So when you talk about self, being a self-published author, finding a good editor, finding a good proofreader, finding somebody who, to read the book and critique it, uh, what we call beta readers, uh, those things are very important. They make they make for a much better novel. And I hear so many times how writers, first time writers in particular, they lament it, how painful it, the editing process has been. Nobody likes to, to be criticized. Uh, you know, the review process is like that. If you think about it, you put your you put your book out there. Somebody buys it. And they decide to review it. and They slam it. Uh, that's hurtful. I'm not going to lie. Nobody, nobody likes to, uh, you know, be slammed. But on the other hand, it, it, it my books are not for everybody. Uh, if you have some kind of dream, whether it be to publish a novel or run a marathon or bike ride across the United States or whatever, or whatever it is, uh, just do it. I, if you aspire to do something, I, I, it's 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 within us to do the things that we aspire to do. And any advice or insight you might have others who were uh, facing retirement or trying to maybe get it all figured out? I go back to what I said about Nike. If you want to do it, just do it. The, the, uh, the exercising your brain, I think, in, in your 70s is just as important as exercising your body. So I... Uh, I, I wouldn't suggest to everybody that they sit in front of, their, of a computer 24-7.
like you and I are. <laughs> yeah, like we do, right? But, like yeah. you and I are doing. But uh, you know, get out there and 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 move a little bit. But but it's important to work your mind as well as your body. And I'm wondering how that live life authentically resonates with you. Res- it resonates with me amazingly. I, I mean, I, I firmly believe in telling the truth, uh, being authentic. Um, my books typically uh, are the product of the headline. I've written a book about a school shooting. I've written a book about uh, a, the police shooting an innocent black man in a traffic stop. I've written a book about the Me Too movement uh, and sexual assault. I, I told you about the clergy abuse case. I've written a book about white supremacy. Um, I like to expose bad things and tell the truth. You know, how would you characterize what you're doing now? Is it uh, is it a, a hobby or is it additional income or both? I would love it to be additional income. Uh, I I would have to say so far it's more of a hobby. For someone looking for an attorney, uh, you know, and, uh, any advice on that? I, I would suggest that the best way to hire a lawyer is based on the experience of someone who has hired that lawyer for the particular problem that you have. So if you're looking for a divorce lawyer and someone's been through a divorce and is happy with the lawyer, that's the best way to find a divorce lawyer. Now, a lot of people criticize lawyer advertising. They, they think it's demeaning or, or hokey or what have you. But if you think about it, if a lawyer advertises for uh, injury cases, let's say, at least you know that that's a person who advertises or who does injury cases. He may not be the best or the worst lawyer in the world, but at least you know he's an experienced injury lawyer. Uh, I'm not suggesting necessarily that people uh, test out lawyer ads and hire lawyers from advertising, but if if all else fails, if you have no referral source for a good lawyer, no solid lead from someone who's used that person, that you might check out uh, who has, who advertises the most experience in a particular field. What's the most important lesson that you've learned uh... You know, since leaving the nine to five job, keeping keeping active both mentally and physically, uh, I I just think that that the idea of of wilting away, uh, you know, laying on a couch watching television or or something like that, if if you're going to be sedentary, if for some reason physically you're sedentary, at least exercise the mind, whether it be. Not everybody can write a book. Not everybody can sit down and write. Not everybody can sit in front of, of a computer. But we can all read. At least most of us can. Or be read too. And I would suggest that you, if you can't exercise the body, exercise the mind. Hey, Mark, that's uh, good, good information and uh, really very useful. Every single bit of it was. So I really appreciate all your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. You can find out more about Mark here. So let's dip into Mimi's kitchen and see how things are going there. Hello, I'm back. So my uh, my uh, ninja here is ready. I'm just gonna turn up the temperature and time it to 13 minutes. And put my tofu in there. So how, see how this is so easy. Easy breezy, and don't crowd uh, the bat, the this uh, little uh, thing here. Just uh, don't let them touch. I'm gonna show you. You just put them away from each other so they don't uh, stick and they cook evenly. So, oh, it smells so good. There you go. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna show the inside. Wanna see the inside? How it looks. You go. 
also I am going to put it in there it's already ready I'm just gonna go start there you go it's gonna be so crispy and so good I tried it once you know, and I put a different marinade and I liked it so now today I'm trying something else alrighty I'll see you later when I play when it's all ready thanks Mimi we will check back soon we return now to our tours of East Central Vancouver Island. The youthful community of Campbell River is beautifully located between Strathcona Park and the Discovery Islands. This growing seaside metropolis is surrounded by wilderness and is a launching point for eager adventurers. Let's continue our tour. Experiencing Vancouver Island and those nearby islands in the Gulf is a visit full of memorable surprises. On our way up the island, we stopped at the quaint, quirky town of Coombs and the old country market, known for its goats on the roof landmark from Norway. Michael has worked here long enough to know some of the backstory about the goats on the roof. Uh, the goats on the roof, um, I think from her, her um, the owner's wife is from Norway, and I guess, you know, goats on the roof is, a, you know, they'll have goats on the roof on their, on their farms in Norway, and they'll have goats on the roof. Um, and I gathered that they thought that it would be a real neat, catchy thing to have goats on the roof. And so they decided they were going to make the building so that they could have, you know, the attraction up top or the, you know, the, the goats. And um, every year we bring the goats in for about nine months. They live up there 24 hours a day and uh, never really have a problem. People want to feed them. They want to get up there with them. But, uh, you know, it's not allowed. But. <laughs> But, but they're the well goats, fed. But the goats are happy. They are, they're happy. Yeah, they're, they're very happy. Next walk inside, the market was built by immigrants to Vancouver Island from Norway in the 1950s. The store's founder grew up in the rural community of Lillehammer and was inspired to include a sod roof in his design of the market. Many Norwegian homes and farm structures are built directly into the hillside, with the sod roof becoming an extension of the hillside. With the help from the family, they unwittingly began to build what would become perhaps the most famous sod roof building in the world. And not far from here is the traveler-friendly town of Parksville, with a Mediterranean vibe inviting you to take a stroll along the beach. And for the past 22 years, a festival has been held in Parksville and in Qualcomm Beach to celebrate their return. And at the peak of the stopover, there can be as many as 20,000 geese. Next week, we visit some of the richest, most dense rainforests in the world, forests that have sustained despite brutal weather conditions. Join us then. Now, if you plan a visit, get ready for a host of attractions and eclectic cultural waiting to be discovered. Let's take one last look in the Mimi's 15 kitchen. 15 minutes are gone. Now let's look. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. You want to look at it. Now, I put all my vegetables on a nice plate like that. You can you can do whatever you want, but this is how I like it. I'm just going to pile it here in the middle. Look how look at the color. Look how beautiful this is. Uh-huh. Pile it, pile it like that. Pile it up. It smells so good. Okay. There you go. Okay. Put this back in there. Add your nice onions. You know, the, if you like onions. If you don't like, you can, you know, just leave them off. But I love pickled red onions. See how pretty this is? All right, then you put your nice dipping sauce on it. You put just a little bit and like that. It's like you're putting a dressing on those vegetables. You see what I mean? And it's just gorgeous and it smells so good. And of course, never forget our friend, the cilantro. I love it. Voila, and you have a beautiful lunch or dinner you can eat it as a meal or as an appetizer when you have your friend over you present this to them they will be so happy 
Until next time, with a nice recipe. Thanks, Mimi. We'll be here again to get one of your great recipes next week. Thank you so much for tuning into Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. If you enjoyed this episode or you learned something new, I want to tell you three ways you can support the show and keep Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared going. And number one, get yourself subscribed. Every week I am bringing on the influencers and the people who can teach you something or have something interesting to share. So just take a moment to hit that subscribe button. And number two, this is the ultimate way to support the show and it takes less than a minute. You can write something short and sweet like, you know, I love the show. It has changed your life or something that you learn from it. Now, I'm not exaggerating that I read reviews every day and every single one, whether short or long, it means everything to me. The more reviews means the higher we rank on all the algorithms, which means bigger guests. So take a minute to leave a review. And number three, the show is live streamed on multiple platforms. If you're watching it now, you can share it with friends. Just click on that share button. I am eternally grateful. Thanks so much for supporting the show. I will see you again next Tuesday for another episode of Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared.